Class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we'll be discussing game 82 of the regular season between the San Jose Sharks and the Edmonton Oilers, in which the Sharks have lost 5 to 2. So that will do it for this regular season. All 82 games in the books, and this one ends just as it started with a San Jose Sharks loss. And I'm sure I speak for a lot of fans when I say I am glad that this season is finally over, not only because this was one of the worst seasons in franchise history for the San Jose Sharks finishing fourth last or potentially even third last in the league but on top of that this was also an extremely boring season for the San Jose Sharks as it was much more of a transitional year for the organization the first year with Mike Greer at the helm and his basic idea for the San Jose Sharks this year was to play all of the veterans and allow pretty much every possible young exciting talent to uh I guess uh marinate in a way in junior leagues or minor leagues or things like that and so we only ended up getting to see players like Eklund, like Bordalo, like Gushin, all of these types of younger talent very very late in the season and we had to go through you know 60 plus games of watching veteran talent who is completely washed up lose games for the San Jose Sharks and so it was definitely a very tough 82 game season to get through but indeed it is finally over and we will obviously have have more to talk about that in the season recap video that I do in a couple of days but right now back to this actual game here against the Oilers the Sharks they lose it 5-2 it was only a few days ago where the Sharks faced off against the Oilers in San Jose and they lost that one by a score of 6-1 got absolutely smacked around and so here tonight it was definitely at least a slight improvement in that they get two goals and they let in one less good job San Jose but more seriously, this game actually started okay for the Sharks. Obviously, the first few minutes of the first period was not good as they gave up the first two goals of this game and it looked like it was going to be yet another route at the hands of the Edmonton Oilers who had done this multiple times already to the San Jose Sharks this season. But they actually fought back in this first period. Not only would they cut the lead in half with a goal by Noah Gregor, but at the end of the 20-minute first period, they would actually be having the edge in shots with 14-13. to 13. And so we thought... You know, maybe the San Jose Sharks, they could make this game rather interesting to give Sharks fans a fun one to watch to end off this season. But that does not end up being the case. Not only do the Oilers end up running away with this game through these last couple of periods, but the Sharks put up an incredibly uninspired and lifeless performance here. In fact, in particular, this third period may have been the worst third period of the entire season for San Jose. Not because they've given up so many goals or anything like that. They've had worse periods in terms of goals given up. But in terms of actual effort, it was pitiful to watch from a Sharks perspective. So in that second period, it goes to a 4-1 lead for the Oilers. Lorenz would get one back on the power play near the end of the second to make it 4-2. But in the third period, it would be topped off with an Evander Kane goal, I guess, to make matters worse, as of course we know Evander Kane's history with the San Jose Sharks. And of course, the Sharks, they lose it 5-2 to end off this regular season. Now moving on to the standings, it was a couple of days ago where we found that the Sharks would not be able to finish last place in the league due to the loss of the by, by the Anaheim Ducks to the Vancouver Canucks. Since the Sharks have the tiebreaker against Anaheim and the Ducks can only reach 60 points, the Sharks cannot possibly finish below them. So second last is the best that they can hope for. But here tonight, we found that that, that is also off the table and that is because the Blackhawks were losers in overtime to the Philadelphia Flyers a pretty tough loss for them they come into the last couple of minutes of the third period down by one tie up that game head to overtime and I ended up watching the vast majority of this overtime instead of a few minutes of the third period for the San Jose Sharks and I clearly did not miss much compare uh, just watching how they actually played in that third period and so in this overtime Jonathan Taves in his final game as a Chicago Blackhawks potentially his final game in the NHL gets a breakaway from center ice it would have been the perfect storybook ending fairy tale ending to his illustrious three Stanley Cup career, but it doesn't end up happening. He doesn't score on the breakaway, and to make matters worse, just a few seconds later, it is the Flyers who get the overtime game winner. So only a single point earned for the Blackhawks in the standing. They finish up their season with 59, 
one point behind the San Jose Sharks. However, while the Sharks cannot finish 32nd and they cannot finish 31st, they can still finish 30th. And this is because the Blue Jackets were victorious over the Pittsburgh Penguins here tonight in overtime. Unfortunately, it does come in overtime, which means that they do not get the regulation win to tie the San Jose Sharks in this particular tiebreaker category. What this means is that while the Blue Jackets are only a singular point behind the San Jose Sharks, they need both points in their final game against the Buffalo Sabres tomorrow if they are to pass San Jose. An overtime loss would not get them there because the Sharks hold the first tiebreaker, which is regulation wins. Now, whether this win comes in overtime or in regulation, it does not matter but they have to win that game for the Sharks to get this third last spot. And this is pretty important, not only because it is better odds in the Connor Bedard sweepstakes as fourth last gets 9.5% while third last gets 11.5%, but this also means that the Sharks can finish at best fifth in the draft lottery compared to sixth because right now it's very possible they drop down to sixth but in that third place spot dropping down to fifth is much preferred the higher you up are in this heavily skilled draft the better because you can get that pick of the player that you want Moving on to the players to talk about here on the top line, we had Hurdle Couture and Peterson kept together once more. There has been a lot of line juggling happening over this three-game road trip, but the one line that has remained constant is this top line loaded up, and I would say they were pretty good once again here tonight still not doing that leading the way leading by example type of situation that I talked about in yesterday's game but at the point at this point of the regular season it doesn't particularly matter I thought Hurdle played a pretty good game I should mention that when I say a pretty good game I mean a pretty good first period because very very few players actually played well past the halfway mark of this game but in the first period I actually did like this line had a few good shifts hurdle really stood out and then of course we also have Jacob Peterson putting up yet another assist here I believe that is nine points in his 11 games here with the San Jose Sharks very impressive and it's a very good sort of uh example for why you'll always hear well maybe a team will tank but players will not tank and that's not necessarily because all players always 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 want to win yes that is a big reason but another big reason is that players still have something to prove imagine if Jacob Peterson had committed to the tank and so he says you know what I'm gonna not try I'm not gonna try and win these games and he ends up with zero points over these 11 games well it's very possible he doesn't even end up on an NHL roster going into next season but now with these nine points in those 11 games suddenly he not only is he a very real option for the San Jose Sharks but there also could be some eyes around the league on him at this point as a potential you know bottom six forward elsewhere so a good end of the season for Jacob Peterson and a good example for why players will try usually until the very end. When it comes to the second line, we had Lorenz with Bordelow and Gregor. Now, of course, I was quite harsh on Thomas Bordelow in my review yesterday, talking about how he was potentially the most disappointing prospect for the San Jose Sharks thus far in that season because he really hadn't shown much in his short stint with the San Jose Sharks this year, especially considering his eight games were so successful last year. But this was a fantastic way for sure for him to end off this season. His best game definitely by far plays on the second line the best line for the San Jose Sharks on the game was very very good in the first period ends up with a primary assist on the Noah Gregor goal and was also one of the only players who on the San Jose Sharks who was actually noticeable past the halfway mark of this game so a great confidence builder game for Thomas Bordalo going into the offseason and eventually into training camp and preseason in a few months we'll see if this will help him sort of get his head on straight and come back stronger next season and then when it comes to the other winger on this line Noah Gregor he gets this goal here that gives him the double digits on the year 10 goals for himself a fantastic end of the season for Noah Gregor it's just hard to predict where his career goes from here because this is not the first time that we have been impressed with Noah Gregor he has been on the team for a couple of seasons now and he always has these spurts of plays where he looks or these spurts of games where he looks very good and yet it never really seems to last and so it's possible that the Sharks give him yet another opportunity to prove himself in the lineup and with how this season finished off for him I imagine he does get that opportunity but will this finally be the moment where Gregor jumps in and actually is able to play a 
strong and solid full 82 game season we don't know but if he can and if he's able to replicate what he has shown in these last you know 10 or so games that he's played he could be a possible you know 15 goal scorer if not maybe slightly more than that for the San Jose Sharks over a full 82 game season next year when it comes to the third line of Zetterlin, Sturm, and McDonald, really not much to write home about. Uh, Sturm, obviously a very strong season for the San Jose Sharks in general, so I guess that's pretty good, even if it wasn't necessarily a great performance from here tonight. On the other hand, Zetterlin, a not great performance for the San Jose Sharks in a small part of the season that he has played, was picked up as a potentially major piece in the eyes of Mike Greer from the Timo Meyer trade deal and he has not panned out at all didn't even manage to get a goal through these last you know 20 or so games that he actually played with the San Jose Sharks this year so rather disappointing for him and this game was really not all that much better and then of course McDonald as a forward on this line once again and I'll mention it once more I'm happy to see him as forward instead of defenseman. And then we have the fourth line of Robbins, Svechnikov, and LeBanc. Robbins playing all three games of this road trip here, his first three games in the NHL as a whole, and honestly, he didn't really do much. There isn't necessarily a ton of negative to say about him, but also not a ton of positive, so it'll be much more up to how he does in training camp and preseason next season to see if he'll actually be able to make the team or if he's just going to be you know, sitting in the AHL at least for another year. When it comes to the defensive side of things, we of course have the first pairing of Thrun and Carlson. Carlson again with no points here tonight, so while he will hit that 100 point mark that we talked about in that Winnipeg Jets game, he will not get any more higher than that. Still a history making season for himself, but this game in particular, not a very standout one, not really one that you're going to want to remember on the season for Eric Carlson, and also the same for Henry Thrun. In fact, Thrun had kind of an opposite end of the season to Thomas Bordelow, while Bordelow in the previous few games wasn't very good, but here tonight played extremely well. Thrun in the previous few games played extremely well, but here tonight wasn't very good. And then when it comes to the other four defensemen on the team, generally, this was a game against the Edmonton Oilers. They have a lot of dangerous scorers like McDavid, like Dreisaitl, like Nugent Hopkins, and not only are they dangerous scorers, but they're extremely skilled and crafty with the puck, and they will constantly make you look silly. I mean, just looking at the Evan Bouchard gore, uh, goal scored, I believe this was the third one of the game for the Edmonton Oilers, the Sharks just looked completely loss as the Oilers set up this tic-tac-toe type of goal and this was you know just a general theme of the game here tonight so the defense not very good but I can't necessarily expect much more from them at least from what we saw through the first 81 games of this season and then finally we have James Reimer as he gets the final start of the season for the San Jose Sharks and potentially his final start as a San Jose Shark in general we do not know if he will be brought back this offseason it's technically possible but I wouldn't be surprised if he does not and while he played a very very strong season in his first year of his contract which was last season with the San Jose Sharks this one definitely left a lot to be desired while the Sharks as a whole were a very very bad team. One of the major reasons why they finished this low in the standings was the absolutely atrocious goaltending that they got from both Reimer and Capo Kaknin. And here tonight was like the perfect ending for James Reimer on the season because it was a great viewing of how he has played in the vast majority of games thus far. He plays makes a few very good saves, lets in a couple of bad ones, and ends up with five goals against on the night. But that would do it for this review. The Sharks will be back in action uh, in about October, at least, for the regular season, in September for the preseason. So we will now have a few months off to try and sort of uh, recoup. But I guess you can say the real season begins now because not the playoffs. The draft lottery in less than a month is going to be huge for this franchise future. Class dismissed.